boom, bang, bang. Yes, I and I, it's that I were once again. One would have said it's Selassie I time. Yes, I and I, King Selassie I time, and it is Rasafari time, and it is no doubt definitely Umlilo Fire Talks time, and definitely it's Umlilo Fire Talks with LNG. This time we are going to be definitely no doubt giving you some heavy reasoning. When we say heavy reasoning, we're not talking about rain that are coming down the, like storm. No, 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 no. It's going to be more of a robust reasoning. It's going to be a fire reasoning. Fire talks, no doubt. We will be spitting fire. And this time of an hour, I will be definitely, no doubt, reasoning with one of our own historians. Yes, it is, definitely, no doubt. Let um, me talk about Mosiah. Yeah, man. The world know him as definitely Tando Lue to Sipuye. And definitely, he has been doing it, actually, uh, uh, reasoning with, I would say, a lot of people, actually, a lot of channels. Actually, media itself has actually, I would say, invited Utando Lue to, to reason with him because of the mere fact of the perspective that he has about South Africa on the highest level. When we look at South Africa, not just on a critical level, but looking at South Africa as it is and making sure this time of an hour you are watching and basically striving to read in between the lines of the what is the history that is written. Because remember, sometimes what is written there, down there, sometimes it is not what actually people want to share to us definitely. And some of the history that has actually been given to us, some people have been talking about it has been actually, I would say, a uh, history that has been sort of given, sort of uh, it's cut it down. Some said no, it's an edited history. Yes, of course. We've got a history within South Africa that we need to tap up on and check it out. In this time of an hour, we are so much blessed within Umlilo Fire Talks because we've got actually here, as I said, Mozaya, and we'll be reasoning with him definitely to Skype. Uh, yes, it is definitely one of, I would say, our own, as I said to you. Rastafari community knows him so much to the highest level that Ukutingu Mozaya Geloza be reasoning upa. Yes, it is, no doubt. And let me now. No waste, no time. Because the Eastern Cape are waiting to see where is Gavi. When you are going to talk about the Gavi, Uzo Tetango Gavi, definitely no doubt. Gavi, are you still there, Dada? Yes, I agree. Rastafari. My yeah. leader, I, I want to come up to the highest level. When I say, actually, you are our own, I would say, historian, you, one of, I would say, uh, you are one of those people, basically, I'm saying that you talk what we want, basically. One would say, uh, you, when you say, uh, Steve Biko said, I write what I like, you t definitely talk what you like, Dada, and definitely not just what you like, but you reason what is actually documented. Indeed, fireman, you know, I and I, as African people, for a long time, we have been told, Uguti, we are people who had no history, mm -hmm. we had no, uh, we were savages who came from the jungles of Africa. So, I mean, I and I always like to focus on the true history and the true reality of black people history, Rasta, and the true reality of African history, the where we come from as African people. O on that note, Gavi, uh, many people now would start to say, okay, so Tetanga history, but firstly, let's start reasoning Go Gavi and myself. Just Tetango Gavi, Umozaya, Utando, Lue, to Sipuya, see Tetanga Bani, Apadada, knowing for the mere fact that you are at this particular time, I would say, a historian, actually. Um, Fireman, I'm, an, I'm a writer, I'm a African centered historian. I also consider myself to be a social scientist, but over and beyond all of that, I'm a Rasta man, I'm a son of the soil, when a fireman, uh, born and bred in uh, Kumbu in the Eastern Cape, and I grew up in Tata, fireman. Chuchu. And I, uh, for a number of years, actually, I spent about a decade studying in Cape Town, you know, so Chuchu. I'm also consider myself a Cape Townian in a way, you know. Same, Cape Town same. is partly my home still, you know. Rastafari. But currently, I work for the Steve Biko Foundation. I'm a program officer there. Respect. My, my leader, I, I, I last remember, actually, we have to sort of dig within Cape Town TV's archives, uh, one of the, I'd say, the interviews that we had with you, because you're also a writer of a magazine, Black Story, right? Black Hour Story. Yes, I actually, the, the name of that magazine, which um, I and I started, is called The Black Voice. The Black and, Voice. Um, yes, and it's focused on our story as African people and really we wanted to tell black people's story from a true African perspective. Because most of the time when you read magazines, you read newspapers, they don't really dig into who we were or who we are as African people, you see, Fireman. So I, I wanted to focus on 
who African people really are and focus on our culture, our spirituality, our politics, our government systems, and everything like that. My leader, this goes to a mere fact that rising up from the I would say areas of Ukumbu, uh, one would ask, Uti, what has inspired Wena? Because sometimes we even ask artists who are singers, Uti, what inspired them to start writing? But Wena, what inspired Wena rising from Ukumbu and rising as a Rasta youth, uh, especially to come up and say, look, me, I would rather basically focus on our African history. Um, it's really because of what I'm seeing, Fireman. We grew up uh, being told, Uti, as African people, we had no history, we had no background. Mm. And actually, things such as slavery and colonialism were justified in the history books as us as founder when we were growing up, saying that Europeans had to come and colonize us in mm. order to make us civilized and humans because we were considered to be barbaric, or savages who had no history, who lived just in the jungles of Africa without any civilization. But um, when I, I was growing up, uh, I came into contact with this information, particularly within Rastafari, which showed us that actually Africa is the cradle of not only uh, mankind, but Africa is also the cradle of civilization. It is in Africa where education, where medicine, where astrology, chemistry, all of these scientific disciplines mathematics. originated here. Even mathematics, mathematics. All of these originated here in the African continent, Fireman. So See? it was me coming into contact with this information that wanted me to reveal and expose some of this information. But also the idea that we were taught when we were growing up is that Jesus was a white man. Mm. And when I came into contact with Rastafari, and when I came into contact with the truth, we found out that actually Jesus could never have been a white man. Jesus grew up in Africa, mm -hmm. um, uh, in ancient Egypt, in ancient Kemet to be specific, mm -hmm. uh, just like Moses grew up in ancient Egypt. And uh, the Bible is actually a narrative, a Bible story that is talking about a history of an experience of African people. So these were the things that I wanted uh, to expose. This is what led me into studying history, fireman. My leader, uh, on that note, Kanye, Kanye, I, I want us basically to band because the two are usela mans now clock on a layer. Because on this particular hour, I know for a fact no one wonge umdung is sitting tight when up a keto. I know the woman get challenging. So Sundays and Gloma popcorns wako, or Sundays again our mans wako a keto and make it sure in the one banga baga ungurasta bring that ital bread, let it sit down there pan. And yes, I light up no chalice because more reasoning are still going to be coming up as we are reasoning with Mosiah Gavi. And it is definitely turned away to Sipuya, our own historian. Clock on Ukuya when you're watching channel 263. And definitely, no doubt, it is Umlilo Fire Talks with LNG. Kaboom, bang, bang, should be there. <laughs> Bang! Bang! Yes, I and I, strictly no doubt, we are yarding forward. <coughs> Some people will be asking, Wagwan, yes, I, we are yarding forward with the reasoning, definitely no doubt, as I said, we are reasoning with our own historian, and definitely no doubt, it is Mosiah Gavi, and he is definitely no doubt uh, with I and I in this hour of this time, and we are reasoning with him here on Unumlilo Fire Talks over the Skypes. Yeah, man, technology so much, you know, powerful sometimes, and definitely we are using technology on a positive level. Remember that, right? My leader, uh, I know in the Wabana, uh, before we, we add that to the break, uh, you actually emphasize good to what has inspired the man to come up, actually, and I would say to, to be the person that tends to, I would say, focus on the African, I would say, history itself. And when you come up, I would say, towards the university to choose the, such kind of, I would say, uh, history and uh, as a vehicle to tell the story about the black people, I would say, story. But most importantly, Gavi, uh, now ones would ask basically that hence as a person that is within I would say e Steve Biko Foundation and you have been doing I would say a, a lot of I would say reasoning and you have also taken sort of lectures there are lectures that you have taken I would say uh, should I say you you have partaken into and you have went to conscientize not only the Rastafari community uh, but also the the political scene within I would say South Africa whereby you also uh, took actually I would say uh, reasoning with the I would say the 
Pan-Africanist Congress? Um, you know, I want to make a, a, a strict distinction here, Fireman, and say that I went, for the, I went for the Steve Biko Foundation, and uh, coincidentally, currently the Steve Biko Foundation is planning uh, the 20th Steve Biko Memorial Lecture, which Respect. is supposed to be held next month. As you would know that Steve Biko was murdered by uh, the apartheid police on the 12th of September, 1977. Yes, so sir. I do work for the Steve Bigo Foundation, but on the side, I'm a volunteer for the Robert Mangalisa Sobukwe Trust. True. So I work very closely with the Sobukwe family and the Sobukwe Trust as well. See? And um, in my work with the Sobukwe Trust, as well as uh, my cadres and my colleagues at the Black House colleague uh, at the Black House Collective here in Soweto, uh, we started a program which was called. Uh, the Zondeni Veronica Sobukwe tribute lecture. And True. it started in 2017 because we wanted to celebrate Umama Usobukwe. Uh, many people were not aware that Umama Usobukwe was still alive in 2017. And mm. she was 90 years old, my brother, you see. And mm. we wanted to celebrate this old woman who had sacrificed so much and given so much of her life to the cause of liberation struggle. And even after 1994, People such as Uma Musobukwe continued and remained principled such that she never sold out herself uh, for a piece of bread or for money mm, or positions mm, of mm, power mm. in government or anywhere in society. And she remained grounded within her community and uh, served and suffered and sacrificed so much for Abandu uh, Abamiyama, when a son of the soul. So those were some of the programs. Recently, actually, just last week, on Thursday, the 22nd of August, See? we hosted the second tribute lecture dedicated to Uma Musobukwe, and it was delivered by Ujaji Von Mohoro. And Ujaji Mohoro, what's interesting about her is that she is uh, the first black woman judge mm. in the South African Constitutional Court, and she was inspired by Uta Tusobukwe to study uh, law, my brethren. Respect. Give thanks. See, yes, sir. My, my, my leader, like, at some point, at some time, some people have to follow. Actually, and I also follow basically what you do. Remember that, uh, uh, one, you know, they say real, respect the real, right? So, uh, one of the things that uh, within your lectures, you always, by all means, basically get, strive to conscientize Abandu Abamnyama, especially when it comes to what is not, I would say, I would say popular. Indeed, fireman. I mean, uh, popular media, when a fireman uh, always circulates uh, popular information. So, when we host these lectures or these events, Mm. or these ceremonies, uh, the intention is to expose Abandu to information that they have never been exposed to before. And uh, we try to go deep, dig deep into the archives mm -hmm. to take out information that will be useful for our people. For example, like I'm saying, uh, before 2017, you could go on to Google and Google the name of Mamosobuko and you could not find anything. But if you go to Google today and Google Umamu Zondeni Veronica Sobuko, you'll find loads of information. And when you trace that information, it all comes to the work that we have done in terms of her biography, writing her story, and narrating her story. And one of the important things, because we are now going to end Women's Month, my brother, you see. Mm. Mm. Uh, hey, Klaus Aufwald, my leader, Klaus Aufwald, you can see that you have been doing this work for you, you same as Umama, who is a man, who is a tentative emotion of trying to erase uh, their stories within, I would say, uh, the struggle. Why, why is it like that? One of the challenges we have is that uh, our approach to history uh, is his theory, his story. Mm. It always mm. tells uh, the, the story of males. Uh, rather than telling a collective story. So we have a problem of telling a uh, history from a patriarchal and, uh, perspective, son of the soul. We are not See? holistic. And uh, this comes from our experience of being colonized by Europeans and Arabs, because both Arabs and European cultures 
They are misogynists. They hate women. Uh, they despise women in terms of within their cultures. Women were excluded. But in Africa, when you look in Africa, in pre-colonial Africa, you see that African society respected women. Women had a respectable place. Actually, we had women who were queens and leaders of society in various aspects throughout the African world. So one of the reasons why Oma Moso Mukwe, Oma Ma O O Nunsekelelo Biko, O Winifred Huare, and many countless other women, Os Bongile Mkabela, women who contributed in the history of this... Dinya uh, Bingi Mama! Don't the Naya Bingi Queen, oh, Rastafari women. The reason why they are not respected and celebrated is because we approach history from a male center. Patriotic. We approach history from a patriarchal a perspective. Mm. And, mm. and this is something we all have to struggle with. We have to return to who we are and respect the role of the matriarchs and stop centering things around the patriarchs and telling only stories of these supermen who only exist without women. And yet, what the irony is, is that even the greatest men you ever see was born of a woman when a son of this one. Mm. My leader, you, 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 uh, on the final class, you are so reasonable because the uh, part on the second point, good point, it actually means we are of women's man, I'm a fund, he says, go in, come in, come in, Louise, and Elonian, and Elomoya. Bogu bayam kata out to mama. Kem nagin di ti apa go umli lo fire talks, e kameni lo yise, elo mama, nelo nyana. Haili ay, silasi ay, jo! Rastafari, King Silasi ay, the first and forever more. Si abu ya umli lo fire talks, remember that, yeah, yeah? Bayama, ni bayama. Bayama. Yes, I am. It is definitely no doubt with the sound of the falling of the wicked. Kaboom! Yeah, man. No doubt. Definitely no doubt. And the search of Google Konukuyo, it is definitely no doubt. Channel 263. And Ubanga Bagam It's still Umlilo Fire Talks. Yes, it is fire reasoning. And definitely we are definitely reasoning with no other than definitely get Utando Lue to Sipuyo, Mozaya Gavi. And in this time of an hour, Simbamba, Enga Apaya, Esoweto, Ezola, Mdini, Baza Uchabanda Baninzike. No doubt, Simbamba gets a reason when you're not a couple of fire talks. Tina says, Cape Town, technology so much powerful. Yes, it is a Skype. Siabule, no doubt. At this time of an hour, Dada, we are moving forward and definitely in the eyes, Gukwabanda Bange, Nango, Genzina, but says, Amburbu, Paul, Swaganya Ganya. But most important leader, Tangabe, Sichonga, and again, no conak balegle, Sitanga Kumbike, the Funasi Valagle, Le Reasoning Gamama. I know for the fact in the Wakwana game, at some point, at some time, a Kukola Makalo, Kanyazi idioms, Abandaba Tetangas of Mansbutu, according to Europeans, they would say behind every great man, there is a woman. You know, Oganya, greatest woman. But I know for a fact when in the Wakwana game, you can correct them into a right corner of Wakwanake. It's not always behind in Africa. Yes, indeed. Uh, that is a European idiom, indeed, to say that a woman is always behind the man. Uh, in Africa, the woman is always besides the man. So we say besides every great man, there is an even greater woman. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you know, uh, because the woman is there to balance uh, the man, and the man is there to balance the woman. And like you said earlier, fireman, uh, part and parcel of the European culture that I was talking about, yes, that is patriarchal and misogynist, is embedded within the religion. Like, for example, what you were saying, they say the father, uh, the son, and the Holy Spirit, because they hated women. But the Holy Spirit actually represented the mother, the, the divine mother of creation. Our women, our mothers, our sisters, our queens, our daughters, when a fireman. Sin? Now, now, leader, I know now, Abandoba Ninsi, Bazauti Man, Kabe Bona Ganya Ganya Gabe Chila, U Channel 263, Bazauti Man, Beske Sambona, Lota, Takui, Zakem Shamu, was new channels out there, Pan. And the, at that particular channel, I still feel to the level that could get Magasin dismantling. Okay, should I say, let's illustrate more basically one of the quotes that you have come up basically giving us to, actually to the highest level. That when you look at South Africa wearing actually mosaic, I would say spectacles, you look at South Africa as actually the criminal settler colony. 
Yes, I think uh, in that interview, that specific interview, where they're talking about uh, what they call the Freedom Charter, which we call the Freedom Cheater. And yes, I, I, I said South Africa is a criminal settler colony, explaining the historical context in which South Africa came into being, because the name South Africa came into being after the anglo Boer War, when the English and the Dutch settlers fought what they call the anglo Bure War, they decided to come together as white European brothers and sisters, and they formed a government called the Union of South Africa in 1910, with the seat of government as the Union building. So this is why I gave that context to say that even today, even if you can look at South Africa, South Africa is a criminal settler colonial identity. It is not an identity that... Uh, was given to us by African people. And that's why uh, uh, during the liberation struggle you had people such as Osobukwe who came and redefined the name of the country as a way of trying to move away from that colonial identity. And they said, this is the Azania. My leader, when we start actually, the Afunu Baga Singe and Kuyo Mkunduwe Azania more and more. But in the Funagan of Gukasinga and Ekala, from the mere fact that I know Ubunokola when you know Cheche Taban and the Ayazgo and the Labana Banu Musa Bazaba away, Babesteta Guepi Channel. But Okona Balegleo and the Funag figure like the point of Bana, why would you look at a freedom charter and reason, actually, I would say, uh, see it as a freedom cheater? Just firstly, Sikale Paglacon. Well, uh, if first and foremost, this document called the Freedom Cheater was not drafted by African people. It's a document that was smuggled into the liberation movement by white communists, the white uh, communist party. And um, one of the things which this document does is that it moves away from the ANC Youth League 1949 program of action. And the program of action of 1949 was adopted by the ANC and it centered the land question and it said that the purpose of the main struggle was that the land should be returned to the rightful owners. But in 1955, when the Freedom Cheetah came, uh, the Freedom Cheetah, one of the first things it says is that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, mm. black mm. and white. Mm. Mm. And so mm. what that mm. does is that it legitimizes the dispossession of African people of their land. It legitimizes Ukubiwa Gum Sabawetu in saying that Um Sabawetu belongs to all anyone who lives in it. And no. that is a falsification of history because this land belongs to the indigenous African people. My little Dinami Buzo Mibin in the Colonel and Kutke, Economies Zuana Jamibin, and Snag, or Kukolami Buzo Mibin, Kau City. A freedom cheetah who is born and grown and definitely named now Gogo. The name that we call by Omnia Umdu now. If human sin the work man again, si born and grown the work man. Now we take and go shabu take and go. Kuko okwa kwa shulu wa komsha ba before abandu ba human. Yes, kalo. Well, abandu ba ti kwe sebe sitting Gogo. The actual South Africa belongs to all who live in it. Why? Liku ngeka fuke leli indo ba na abandu ba ome ba ya human na bona. Well, fire money. Aba Abma City, Amabu, Rabelung, white people have got the land. Yes, I think sir. we need to state that very emphatically and very clearly because even the recent statistics by the government have shown that about 83% of the land in South Africa currently is owned by white people who are a tiny minority in terms of the population. Mm. That is why we are squashed in places like a Kailicha. Quashed in townships like Koma Kukule, Filipi, Oluanze, and all of these other townships, Om Tansa, Nongangelizwe, and you see that we live in those places, Gutwa, so these quarters in the land of our own ancestors, when a son of the soil. So this is because the most arable land, the most profitable land, the most fertile land is owned by Europeans in places like Stellenbosch. Somerset East and all of these other places 
throughout mm. this country of our forefathers and foremothers. Now, Moza, Pamba Ndugia, the leader, here are outside Nancy Cape Town TV. Here's actually basically now a band about Bukele Umli no fire talks. Um, talking about now from the Rastafari families down to the outside non Rastafari families who are watching outside Umli no fire talks. What would be your message, especially in Gue as Utandulwe to Mosiah Gavi? I think uh, the first message I would say is to our African women to say that. African women must continue fighting the good fight, and uh, we, we truly appreciate our African women. But secondly, we are going into the month of September, the month of renewal, the month of rebirth, the month of the African New Year. So I want to say to us all as African people, African women, African men, African children, that let us renew ourselves. Let us regenerate ourselves and renew our spirit and be confident in the victory of good over evil because uh, we are still in the march against the evil forces even in the 21st century, son of the soil. Uh, white supremacy does not relent and Africa should not relent. Africa should not equivocate and Africa must be heard. My Lord. On that note, in the Funu Good Girl, I salute Gavi, and no doubt, definitely, I will never dispute the works that you do with my leader. Give thanks, I and I. Rastafari. Rastafari. When Rastafari. only the fire talks were ever at, it's still, no doubt, kaboom, bang, bang. Tibana now, I'm not going to say once again, I'm going to say, I'm going to repeat, go 9 o'clock, go rest on. Gavi, my leader. Yes, sir. Who you fire, when? Yeah, man. Oh, I'm man. That's the far and no doubt. We like I feel like Nangoko co producer being asked sends more time, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, yes, I, I can yes, see uh, some young people yeah. even yeah, it has labo yabalega as we reason. Yeah, uh, man. Uh, but we need more time, man, still, so that we can go to more airy, airy, you see? I over More in depth, you... but no, we give thanks even for this opportunity.